Hey everyone, Craig from the University of Applied Research and Development, and this is our Veteran Stories Difference Makers video cast. Delighted to have Brian Ward with us here today from the Dared Up podcast. Hi, Brian. Hi, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. I was looking forward to this. Thank you. Great to have you with us. And you're a Marine Corps veteran, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Why don't you tell yes, us about sir. your motivation for joining the military? Well, it's funny. I was uh, I was a young I should say that I had no interest in joining the military. I had no part of me was even thinking about the military. And to be honest, uh, Craig, I, I was a high school student getting ready to go off to college, started college. I was going to school at a, a community college where I lived and I was working full time at a job and uh, I needed a break from school. You know, I was fresh out of high school and right into college and I needed a break. And I told uh, my parents that I was going to take um, a semester off from school and just work and uh, kind of relax a little bit, enjoy myself. And my dad said, uh, he looked at me and said, uh, that's fine. You can do that. But uh, two things are going to happen. Number one, you're going to start paying rent <laughs> because you're living in our home. And if you're not going to go to school, you're going to pay rent. And uh, the second thing is, if you do take this break, take this semester off, I promise you, you will never go back to school. So those are the two things you have sitting in front of you right now. You, you, make, you make your decision. And uh, I started talking to some people at work. I was frustrated. I was just like defeated. You know, I was like, oh crap, I got to start paying rent, you know? So I started talking to a couple people at work. And the funny thing is, is my manager at the at place where I was working, he was an ex-Marine. And he said, you know, I was, listen, I was, 18, 19 years old. He said, you know, Brian, you should, you should consider the military. And I thought, no way. I'm never, ever going to the military. He's like, nope, it'll be good for you. It'll give you discipline. It'll give you work ethic, uh, help you grow up a little bit. Um, you, you really should look into it. So I started kind of kicking it around. I went to down to the recruiting station and talked to not only the Marines. I, I wanted, I was considering the air force too. I talked to the air force recruit recruiter and, um, the Marines just piqued my interest. They, they promised me everything under the sun. And, and uh, so I went back, told my manager, I think I'm going to go into the Marines. And he was, he was ecstatic. He was like, that's awesome. And then, uh, then, then the, the hammer came down when I went home and told my parents uh, that I was going to go into the military. <laughs> um, so truth be told, I, I had no interest in, like I got my military shirt on now. Truth be told, I had no interest in going in, in the Marine Corps, no interest in even considering the, the military, but um, you know, looking at my options as a young man, um, I thought it was a great opportunity, a way to serve my country. Uh, I was, I was mm. kind of excited about it. And, um, so yeah, I, uh, I was, I went in the military, I, I signed up for the Marines as my job was going to be, uh, uh, military police. Uh, my recruiter quickly told me that, uh, military police was not going to be available. There's a huge waiting list for it. He said, what's your, what's your second option? Well, I was really good with my hands in, in cars. I'd spent my whole life with my dad working on vehicles. I said, you know what? How about a mechanic, like a jet mechanic or something? And he said, awesome. We can put you down for that. So fast forward a little bit. I uh, was going to my, um, well, let me just stop there and I'll let you ask the questions because uh, I could go into a long story about, about my time in the military. Hey, that's why we're here. We'd love to hear your experience in the military. So, so push play. All right. Um, so anyways, I, I went to my, um, my, what they call my MOS, which is your military school. And uh, I got to the, it was in Tennessee. I'm from California and I got to Tennessee. I was just, you know, I'm, I'm a brand new, brand new young Marine, uh, fresh out of boot camp, fresh out of Marine Corps combat training. And uh, they, they, had a whole group of us in the room and I'll never forget it, Craig. It's like, it was yesterday. Um, they said, how many of you are here? Raise your hand. If you're here to be a jet mechanic and a bunch of us raised our hand and he goes, put your hands down. You're no longer a jet mechanic. And I went, what, what do you mean? I'm no longer a jet mechanic. And he said, uh, there's a huge waiting list for jet mechanics. So, oh, wow. um, we're transitioning your job. We can't have you waiting around forever for this job to open up. So we're transitioning your job as a flight equipment technician. What? What is that? So essentially what that was is I was working, my job was going to be working on all the flight gear, all the flight equipment, um, safety gear, 
that all the pilots use for the helicopters and jets. And I was, uh, I have to be, I have to be honest, Craig, I was really irritated. I was really mad mm. because here I am signed up for this four year, you know, job in the military, what I thought was going to be a jet mechanic promised by the recruiter to be a jet mechanic. And in the blink of an eye is taken away from me and they transitioned me into another job. Wow. Um, I was so upset about it. Um, you know, listen, I'm 19 years old. I was so upset about it. I, when I left, um, the, uh, the schooling that day, I called my dad up. I said, you need to find my recruiter. Cause I I'm, I'm really thinking about walking away, like going, going a wall. I was, I was really thinking about it. my dad's like, don't, don't, don't jump. Don't, don't overreact here. Let's figure out what we can do. He tried to find my recruiter and couldn't obviously recruiting jobs are, you know, they're short periods of time and uh, either they stay in as a recruiter or they go back to their regular uh, job, mm. uh, whatever that was. Uh, and he couldn't find my recruiter, but I ultimately stuck it out, spent uh, another eight weeks at my school in Tennessee, stuck it out and um, ended up at the, uh, at a, a base here in Southern California, which is only four hours away from my hometown, um, as a as a flight technician. And um, I have to say, as as much as I was frustrated about uh, what had happened, um, the fact is uh, I was still doing something to serve my country. I was doing a mm -hmm. job that was that was helped that that helped um, protect our pilots um, mm -hmm. when they were up in the air. Uh, so. And I met a lot of lot of cool people and just really enjoyed my time. Uh, how long were you in the service? Four years. So that's a, that's a whole other story. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so four years. Uh, my end of my service was up. Uh, when you when you when you're about to check out, get your you know basically you're you're checking out of the military. Essentially, you have to go through this process of this checkout process on the base that you're at. And you have to check out with all the different places that you worked, um, all your different commanding officers. And then you, and then ultimately you finally check out your last checkout is with the commanding officer of the base. And, uh, I went up to his office. He was getting ready to sign off on my paperwork. And he said, um, so, uh, you want to get out, huh? And I said, uh, yes, sir, I do. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm ready to experience civilian life. And he said, well, he goes, what can we do to get you to stay in? And I said, I'm, I'm you know, I, I did four years. I served my country. I served it well. Um, I'm ready to go. And he said, well, what if I throw a signing bonus in front of you? Now I'm 22, like 22 years old, 23 years old. Um, I said, well, sir, uh, that's nice. Um, I'm just not really, <laughs> really sure that I really am interested. And he goes, well, I can put fifteen thousand dollars on the table for you right now wow. for you to re for you to reenlist. And you're twenty three. I'm twenty three, twenty two, twenty three. For a young man that you know in the military, you don't make a whole lot of money. That was a lot mm. of money. Mm. And I said, "Wow." Um, so does that mean I can sign up for another four years, sir? And he goes, "No. If I give you fifteen, you got to sign up for six. And I said, "Well, I've been in for four. If I sign up for six, that's ten. I'm only 10 years away from my retire from re actually retiring. So I would just ultimately stay in another 10 years and just retire. And he goes, well, that's kind of the point. And I said, yeah, I think I'm going to have to pass up on that bonus. And so that was it. And he said, okay, because I just thought I would throw it out there and see, see if you wanted to do it. So um, yeah, I walked, I walked away, was ready to, uh, to take on the civilian world. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't regret my decision. Um, there are times that I think back now that I, I talk about that, you know, I would be well retired right now from the military because uh, I've been out for such a long time. I got out in 1996. That was my uh, end date. And uh, so I would be well retired right now. But you know what? My life, I don't know where my life would be today if I had stayed in. You know, God, God guides us in these directions and we have to trust him. And, um, uh, you know, I went with what I felt in my gut and what God was telling me to do. And here I am today. So tell us about that, um, because obviously I want to get to the the Dad Up podcast. But what did you do straight out of the military then, with the skill sets and the knowledge that you had? 
Well, it's it's interesting. The skill sets and the knowledge that I had, that I the job that I was doing in the military, I actually considered going and working at some sort of like a like a like an airport, like Los Angeles mm. uh, International Airport, because um, there's a lot of job opportunities there. I also considered um, going into the police force because they look at um, you know military, ex-military, marine or veterans, um, and they take those guys into consideration. So I considered that. Uh, I really wanted to be a police officer when I was younger. So. Um, I had taken that, uh, as a, as a, um, uh, probably a, uh, well, I should say I took that as an idea. Uh, but the job that I was working at before I went into the military, I worked at a grocery store and their union. And when you go into the military, when you work for a union job, if you go into a military, when you get out of the military, you actually guaranteed your job when you get out of the military. So the first thing I did, so I made sure that I had a job is I went, I contacted the store that I used to work at as a young 18, 19 year old kid. I contacted the store and I said, Hey, can I talk to you? And I said, I can't remember the guy's name, my manager's name back then, who, who encouraged me to go in the military or in the Marines. Uh, I said, Hey, can I talk to him? He's like, Oh, he, he's not at this store anymore. He's a regional now, but we can get you in contact with him. So I got in contact with him and I said, Hey, I went in the Marines, spent four years in the Marines. I'm out now. I'm now a civilian. I need a job. And I know that, you know, because I was part of the store and it's a union, I can get my job back. And he said, absolutely. He goes, tell me where you're living now. So I mm. told him and he goes, give me two or three days. I'll find you a job. And I said, okay, cool. And within a couple of days, he had found me uh, back at the grocery store, a job at a local grocery store where I was living and got me a job. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so within three days I had a job back at the grocery store. Um, and it was just a short term job, something that I can earn money right away. And, um, so yeah, I started doing that. Um, luckily though, uh, I was able to get into the banking world and that's what led me to where I am today, working for the company that I work with today. Um, I, I got a job as a junior, I applied at a bank got a job as a very junior loan officer, knew nothing about loans, but got a job as a very junior loan officer. And uh, that was, that'll be well, 25 years in April. I've been at the same bank. Uh, and uh, wow. so, yeah, and now I'm a manager at that, at that bank and manage a department uh, running um, large commercial lending loans. Uh, I, have a, I have a team of uh, eight employees that work for me. Um, and yeah, I've been there for 25 years. So to answer your to answer your question, um, really the 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 tools that I learned as far as my skill sets um, didn't really apply to what I'm doing today. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I wasn't doing that type of type of work, um, but you know, it, it it provided me an opportunity to work at the bank. And hey, I'm 25 years here. I am. Tell us about what motivated you to start the um, the Dead Up podcast. Yes. So data podcast has been around now for about two and a half years. Um, I have two sons, uh, 23 and 20 are their ages. And um, at the time, uh, my oldest son was in college. Uh, my youngest son was about to graduate from high school. He was a senior in high school. And um, I had this feeling inside uh, and I can't explain it, but I was got to a point where I was really starting to feel down. Uh, not so much depressed, but I just kind of felt like uh, I had been such an involved dad in both of their lives growing up. I had coached every single one of their teams all the way up through high school. Uh, I had been to just about, I mean, I can count on one hand how many parent teacher conferences or sporting or, or school events that I actually missed. So I'd pretty much been at everything that they were involved in their entire lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And I felt like I was getting to a point where I've got an older son now that's off in college, another son that's about to graduate high school and go off to college. My wife and I had raised these two independent young men that were good young men. I felt like my dad journey was ending. I felt like I had done my job and mm -hmm. I felt like that was going to be missing. Now, don't get me wrong, Craig. I was looking forward to being an empty nester with my wife. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I felt like what's next? Mm -hmm. Because I did what I was supposed to do. I mm -hmm. raised, my wife and I raised two young men. Uh, they're great young men, independent. They can function on their own now. So now what do I do? My dad journey was ending. Now, I, obviously, as we know, it doesn't end. But 
um, I started talking to a family member. I was talking to a family member, a really close uh, family member of mine. And he said, you know, um, the one thing that I think of when I think about you, Brian, is you're a phenomenal dad. So why not do something to give back to other dads? Why not do right. something to try to help other dads be like you have been? And he said, um, how about a podcast? And I, I'd listened to a few podcasts, didn't know much about them. Um, and I thought, eh, I don't know if that's for me, but I'll, I'll look into it. And I did a little bit of research, talked to my wife. She's like, oh my God, that would be amazing. You should do it. And uh, that's kind of how Dad Up got started. Um, I just started interviewing. And there's my website. Yes, I just started interviewing, um, you know, celebrities, pro athletes, entrepreneurs, pastors, um, different guys uh, that could share their experiences in their careers and what they've done so well in their careers, but also share their experiences as, of being a dad and what that's meant to them. And my goal for the show was not to make money. It wasn't to, it was really a hobby, something that I could mm -hmm. do to give back. Um, but my goal for the show was really to just help families be better, help dads be better. And if I could impact just one dad out there to help him be a better dad for his kids, then I've done my job. Awesome. And the show is, uh, you know, we're, I mean, I've got 130 something episodes recorded. I just dropped my 127th today. Um, wow. And, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. And it's been a been quite a journey. Uh, um, I have been featured on um, CNN. Uh, they did a Father's Day special uh, on me and my and my podcast uh, last year. Uh, I've been in newspapers. Uh, I've been on radio. Uh, and uh, I actually most recently did a uh, commercial for a international movie that came out on Christmas Day, last Christmas Day on the Kurt Warner story uh, called American Underdog. And a production company uh, reached out to me and asked me to do a commercial for their uh, for their movie. Wow! So I did that. Um, so yeah, uh, so it's been going great. Uh, something that uh, I never thought that it would get to this point, and where mm. it goes from here, I'm not sure. But the goal is just to keep running. <laughs> How important do you think it is for dads? I just noticed the episode, the brotherhood of fathers or fatherhood. How important is it for dads to have? other dads around them as a community of dads to share experiences? Listen, we've heard the old line, it takes a village, right? Um, that's, that's what it's the truth be told. And if, as for parents, it takes a village. You need to have people around you surround that are that you that surround you that help you uh, in this parented journey. It's hard. It's tough. It's challenging, but it's one of the most rewarding jobs we can have. And I think for dads in particular, uh, they feel they feel this pressure. They feel this weight on their shoulders of being the financial provider. They have to be out working and bringing home money for the family. And yes, those are important, but it's also just important to be an involved parent. And if you're surrounding yourself with other dads that are involved in their kids' lives, it's gonna it's gonna impact you and influence you to be the dad that you need to be for your kids. Um, they say that, you know, we are basically the five people that we hang out with the most. So if you're hanging out with good quality dads, you're going to be a good quality dad. And I think, um, you know, for me in particular, I had a lot of good mentors in my life um, that helped me really understand what it means to be a dad. Uh, but more, more, more importantly, just through this podcast, doing this show, I've surrounded myself with a ton of dads, mainly on social media but a ton of guys that have the same, the same mission of really changing families, you know, the family um, dynamic and impacting dads and parents. And this is for moms too, De but parents in general to really step up and be, I mean, be the best that we can be for our kids. Um, so for me, it's been, it's been great. Um, but I highly encourage for dads that may be struggling or moms too, if you're struggling in certain areas of your life as a parent, look to other parents that are similar to you and look to see what they're doing. Talk to them. Talk to people. I mean, <clears throat> mentors are huge. I mean, anything that we do in life, we should always have a mentor. Mm. So. That's right. 
I find when I talk to other dads um, about a challenge or a struggle and they look like they've got it all together, they just look at you sideways and go, it's not always like this. It's not always fantastic and it's not always bad. It's just a co it's constant attention. It's constant, right. effort, it's constant relationship building and it's constantly being willing it to um, not to compromise but to understand that situations change. And today the decision might be a little bit different than the decision tomorrow, depending on the context and what we're going through. But the values stay the same. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I agree with that totally. What would you say to someone who's a dad and um, the kids are moving from that 10 and 11 year old to being 13 and 14 and that feeling of independence and I know everything? What would you say to a dad who's encountering be, that? Two words, be patient. <laughs> because when they're at that age, um, Kids think they know everything. Parents know nothing. Um, and the last thing, the last thing that your that your 12, 13, 14 year old wants to do, to be honest, is to hang out with mom and dad. Because they're trying, they're, listen, they're trying to find out who they are. And it's that really that independent stage that they go through, especially those teenage years, um, that they discover who they want to be and who they, who they, uh, who they are as a person. And I think for parents in particular, having that trust with them and allowing them enough freedom that they can really discover who they are uh, and trusting that they'll come back because they do, they come back. Um, but trusting that they'll come back, just be patient. That's what I tell dads. Just be patient, hang in there. Uh, just make sure you're con continuing to con have conversations with them. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that I do encourage dads, especially through those teenage years, I encourage not only dads, but I encourage moms, I encourage parents. Listen, when your kids are going through those teenage years and they want to be independent, let them be, let them trust that they know what they're doing, trust that they're going to make the right decisions. And if they fall, support them, be there for them. Right. I've told, I've told my kids their entire lives. I don't care what you do, good or bad. I'm always going to be, and my kids are play sports. So I always use this analogy. I'm always going to be on your team. I'm always going to be your teammate. So you can always come to us. You're the home that you're in. That's parents, nice. The home that you have for your kids is, a, is supposed to be a safe space for them. So allow your home to be that sp safe space. Allow your home to be that place where they can come to if they're struggling with something, whether it's inside or they're struggling with something outside of the home. Allow them to come to you and talk to you and listen. We have two ears, one mouth. Use them accordingly, right? We've heard that before, right? So do that as parents. Listen more to your kids before you really just try to jump in and fix everything. And allow your kids to make the mistakes. Allow your kids to fall, but always be there to help them up. Always. Mm. Nice. Brian, firstly, thank you for your service in thank the military. You. Appreciate you. Appreciate what you're doing with the Dad Up podcast as well and encouraging dads to be the best that they can be. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate it, Craig. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And for those of you watching uh, the recording on Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Facebook, on Twitch, on any of the platforms, even Pinterest, which we've just launched, wherever you may find this recording, do reach out to Brian. Uh, the link has been on the video and it'll be in the show notes as well. So I encourage you to reach out and join his podcast and download some episodes and really soak in the wisdom of Brian and his guests as well. So thanks for being with us on the Veterans Series Difference Makers podcast. Look forward to seeing you again soon.